if you've ever been in an intense relationship with a man where you have a constant feeling of high highs and low lows, maybe a part of you feels like you need to end it, but another part of you feels terrified of letting him go because you feel so much for it. Maybe your confidence has started to take a nosedive, but you are confused and don't want to make a mistake. Today, I'm going to share six signs that you might want to strongly consider ending this relationship if you can't shape up and change. The first thing I'd like to say is if you find yourself in the middle of a very painful and confusing relationship or have been in your past and you want to prepare yourself so you don't go through the same cycle again, my heart goes out to you. I need you to understand that there's nothing wrong with you. If you're experiencing this pain, doesn't mean that you deserve it. It doesn't mean that you're flawed. It just means that you need to recognize, take a bird's eye view, recognize what's going on and make some changes so your self-esteem, your confidence, your dignity remain in place and you can ultimately attract the connection, the depth, the respect, the love and the devotion that you want, even if it's not from this guy. I know you might find it hard to believe, especially if you feel high level of attraction, high level of intensity with this man, but I'm here to tell you that if he's not respecting you, and I'll outline some ways in which he may not be, you need to set some strong boundaries. You need to make some changes. And if he can't step up and get his shit together, you need to call it quits. You need to cut your losses and run and understand that there's always a chance, as long as you're alive, to create the connection that you want, even if it's somebody else. The first sign that you might want to strongly consider ending this relationship is verbal abuse. Now, verbal abuse is a component of emotional abuse, but I'm separating it because I want to make it clear that this is something very specific. And what am I referring to as verbal abuse? Well, I'm calling shouting verbal abuse. There's no need in a conversation, in an argument, to raise your voice to the point of shouting. Every now and then, things will get heated up a little bit. When you catch yourself, or you catch the person raising voices, that's the first sign that self-soothing needs to take place and a boundary needs to be in place or enforced. And if the person can respect the not raising of the voice well before the shouting phase, then no conversation needs to take place. Second thing is name calling or swearing at you. Imagine a guy who is saying, you are stupid or you are this and that. There's no need for any of that. A conversation that includes intensity, does not need to go the way of name calling. Name calling is abuse. So if you find a guy who's name calling and he's not even thinking twice about it, you need to draw a line in the sand and say, this is not something I accept. Even if you've accepted this in the past, even if you've received this from people in your past, including parents or family members, there's no place for that in a conscious, healthy relationship. Number two, I'm gonna go into emotional abuse as a separated stance to make it clear. The first part of emotional abuse, I'd say, is hypercritical. Someone who's very critical of you, someone who's demeaning in the way they share feedback. There's a difference between saying, I prefer if you do this, that you're wrong for doing it this way. Or even going further and attaching character flaws to a specific behavior that you are experiencing or expressing. The next one is going to be controlling behavior. Controlling behavior means telling you what to do, how to think, how to dress, who to connect with, who to not connect with, how to speak, how to share ideas. I mean, you get the drift. If you've experienced this, you understand what I'm talking about. In essence, you're talking about someone who's invading your boundaries, either because you haven't clearly laid them out or there's been no consequence, or because he just doesn't give a crap. He just wants what he wants. He's going to get his way or the highway. And he's going to use a variety of strategies, conscious and unconscious, to get you to do what he wants you to do. So if you ever catch yourself in a situation that feels controlling, that feels possessive, that feels not right to you, you need to speak up for yourself because the longer you go without expressing it, without drawing a line in the sand, without saying, this doesn't work for me, the more controlling the relationship will turn out. Now, before I share my last study science, if you're a single woman watching this, you're not in the middle of a relationship, but you're single. My guess is you're not fully aware of the root cause why you're still single. And what I've done is I've taken 13 years of helping women in every walk of life, every continent, every kind of love challenge you can imagine to attract their ideal life partner. And I put together a quiz you can take in about 60 seconds that will reveal to you 
the number one reason you're still single. If you want to participate, all you have to do is go to the first link in the description. You will find a page that looks like this. Answer a few simple questions. And in 60 seconds, you'll have two things. The answer to the question, why you're still single, and a custom report that's going to share based on your own specific blind spot, what is the number one thing you can do starting today to reverse this trend and attract the relationship you want in a fraction of the time. The next sign, which is part of emotional abuse, is manipulation. Acting in such a way that the only possible solution or the only possible answer is the answer that he wants. He wants to eat Mexican food, for example. So he's going to go for a variety of playfulness to being dramatic, to making you wrong, to doing whatever it takes, guilting you so that you end up choosing of your own accord the thing that he wants you to agree to. That's manipulation. There's multiple different forms of manipulation, but you know that manipulation is taking place when you recognize that only when you act in the way that the partner wants or needs does he become the kind, generous, loving expression of a partner that you're genuinely expecting the majority of the time. And when you go outside of what he wants, he becomes passive aggressive, demeaning, nasty, avoidant, you name it, until you change your behavior and then reinforce the manipulation. But at the same time, he'll give you the thing you want, the validation, the love, quote unquote love, because it's not really love, it's a trade in the way he's acting. The next one is incredibly painful and it's one of the most challenging aspects of our relationship that is abusive, which is gaslighting. And that is the bending of the truth with defiant certainty. You experience something and the person is telling you that the opposite of what you experience is the truth. To the point where the degree of certainty is so radical and clear that you might start questioning the truth. Now, every now and then people get confused. Every now and then people have a vague memory about what happened. But this is a constant feeling that the person is telling you the opposite of what you know to be true, to actually be true. That's a sign of gaslighting. That's one of the things where it's very, very hard to recognize. But once you recognize it, it's a clear drawing of the line. Otherwise, you're in for a shit show, my dear. Last one is going to be revenge in the punishing sense of the word emotionally. Here's what I mean by that. Every now and then, human beings, part of being human is when you're hurt, unconsciously hurting someone else. It's not cool and it shouldn't happen in relationships but it does happen in relationships. Now, sometimes there's a degree of planning and a degree of punching that goes well beyond the automatic response most people step into. And that's where your partner understands what hurts you the most and uses that as a tool for punishment when he's experienced pain. He's experienced a level of pain, whether it's real or imaginary, doesn't matter. He will use whatever means necessary, including what hurts you the most, punching below the belt, to make you feel pain until he's determined that you've suffered enough and then he can release that pain. And that might mean he disconnects with you for a week and you have no idea if he's alive or dead or something's happened to him, but he's not returning your calls or messages. Maybe he's voicing something that you in confidence shared and he's shouting it to the four winds and making you feel even more wrong and shameful about what happened as a result of just bringing out in the open, even though it's something that should be treated with the most respect. Now, here's my thing. If you're experiencing any of these things, there's two things that can change this. And the first one is something you need to do within yourself. The second one, you might need some help for. And the first one is making a strong decision. Making the decision that even if you don't know how to change this, even if you're still confused, that you're going to do something different. Whatever you've been doing, let's be honest, has not been working. If it were working, you wouldn't be watching this video. So if that means that you need to get more understanding of the kind that's practical, that's the first part that you need to start voicing what you want more strongly, that you need to surround yourself with a family that perhaps he's been preventing you from connecting with. That's the first thing that you need to understand that no matter what you've experienced, this needs to change. Your life can be better and it will be better. It's not going to be easy, but it's definitely doable. And the price to pay is courage. The price to pay is decisiveness. The price to pay is being willing to say, fuck no, no more. <laughs> the next part has to do with getting support. Many times in the midst of something very painful, you may not have the tools or the skills or the courage or the awareness to make the shifts you need. 
So I'm talking about if there's something very intense taking place, therapy will probably be the most likely avenue for you to reach out to. If you don't have cash for therapy, there's many types of groups out in your community that you can for free go there maybe once a week and get some guidance and you listen to other people and get some understanding as to how you can start changing this. If you're not on that extreme end of the spectrum and it's something more practical in nature, but you still need a little bit of courage, maybe coaching would be a good option. Now, I'll say it out loud. Not all groups, not all coaching, not all therapies created equal. There's good therapy, bad therapy, good coaching, bad coaching. I need you to do your research and I need you to step into taking action of the kind that goes beyond just doing this on your own. My guess is if you've experienced this for a while, if you could have changed this on your own, you would have already. I'm not saying you can't. I'm saying it might take 10 more years. So please do something about it. Make a strong decision and get the help you need. Hope this is helpful and useful. If it is, it would mean the world to me and to my channel. If you click like and subscribe, and if you want to continue learning how you can attract the guy you want without any for gimmicks, manipulation, games, or stupid techniques, make sure to watch the next video right here.